Hi guys, I'm Randy with BRS TV, and today we're showing you how to set up an all-in-one aquarium from start to finish with this Red Sea Max E170 tank. Along the way, we'll explore some benefits to running an all-in-one tank and demonstrate just how easy they can be to get up and running in your home. All-in-one or AIO tanks offer reefers the opportunity to have a larger tank than popular nano options, and in some cases include everything you need to create a thriving live aquarium in your home, office, condo, or apartment, while at the same time being space-saving with their small footprints. Unlike a larger reef-ready tank with the sump underneath and plumbing rising up the back, with an all-in-one tank the sump is typically behind the display, yet can include some of the same features and equipment like a protein skimmer, recirculation pumps, and return pumps. That means you don't have to cut and glue plumbing together, not only reducing potential leak points, but also allowing you to save space by being able to push the tank almost completely against the wall. And since AIOs often have smaller footprints and are all-inclusive, they typically come in at a much lower cost because they don't allow you to empty your wallet on equipment and upgrades, generally require less maintenance because everything is contained in one tank, great additions to an apartment or condo because of their lower weight, and even better choices to adding to your bedroom or office due to their nearly silent operation. Today we're setting up an example of one of these all-in-one systems with this 45-gallon Red Sea E-Series 170 that takes up less than two feet of space in length and in width and comes with all the essential equipment except a heater. The E-Series is a true all-in-one system but also offers you the ability to transition into having a sump under the cabinet without having to completely drain the tank or start from scratch with their built-in bulkheads in the rear chamber and recessed cabinet panels which allow you to operate in AIO mode with an easy to implement upgrade path in the future. This E-170 tank utilizes a single cord power center for providing power to your main equipment through seven switched outlets, two of which are open for anything additional you may want to add to the tank. Along with that, there are some well thought out features from Red Sea that make this plug and play tank one of the more stylish options out there, like ultra clear front and side glass panels with black silicone, specifically fitted and properly sized protein skimmer that nestles in the rear sump and is hidden away by a sleek panel that flips forward for easy access, a removable media tower that holds media bags like the included bag of respec carbon, taller cabinet right at 34 inches, Italian made return pumps from one of the most reputable pump makers in the industry, Aqua Illuminations Hydra 20 wireless LED light that swings up and out of the way for easy access and maintenance. And on top of all that, the E-Series Red Sea tanks come in either black or white options to match your home's decor. Lastly, if you're looking for a bit more size and water volume, Red Sea also has the E260 with all the same features and a bit more, like dual return pumps for added flow and redundancy, an additional Hydra 26 to add some extra oomph and coverage, and a footprint of 36 inches long with a little over 22 and a half inches wide, which holds just under 70 gallons. So what do we need for today's setup other than the tank stand and equipment that comes with it? In order to maintain the tank temperature at 78 degrees, which is most commonly the target temp reefers aim for, I'll drop in a heater that's at least 150 watts like this Neotherm from Cobalt. For some substrate and rock structure for mounting corals and for biological filtration, I'm adding a single 20-pound bag of Aragalive special grade sand and about 40 pounds of Reef Saver rock. Of course, I'll also need water and salt, in which case I've got the Red Sea salt mix in the blue bucket and some reverse osmosis deionized water from our own RODI unit, but filtered water from your local fish store or purified water from the grocery store can also work. Along with that, I'll want to test the water and make sure I mix it to a salinity that the fish and corals I'll add down the road are accustomed to. And to do that, I'll use a handheld refractometer like this. Finally, starting the beneficial bacteria colony is always best practice when setting up a new tank and can help the tank cycle take off. In which case, I'll add a 4-ounce bottle of marine nitrifying bacteria from Dr. Tim's. Assembly of the E-Series stand is pretty straightforward, especially if you already have experience piecing together similarly styled flat-packed furniture. This marine grade stand and cabinet goes together rather quickly, which took me just a little over 30 minutes from start to finish, and includes unique quality features like cam screws that thread into plastic retainers, which feel more secure and less likely to strip, as well as plastic cam covers rather than simple stickers to protect and hide the metal hardware. One quick thing to note about this specific E-Series tank, and very likely others in the entire Red Sea lineup, is the top of the stand is packaged with the box for the tank rather than with the rest of the stand, which is probably to aid in protecting the tank during shipment. The last part of the stand is the 7 outlet power center, which attaches with 5 screws and installs in seconds. 
The tank itself is even quicker to put together, which took me under 15 minutes to do, which may require some quick help from an extra set of arms to put the tank in place. After the tank is on the stand, you can put together the skimmer, which is just slipping the pump into the bottom, adding the airline hose and cup, and then dropping it into the back of the tank. You can add the recirculation pump into its chamber after installing the adjustable nozzle, and all that's left to do is mount the Hydra 26 to the adjustable mounting arm. This again only takes a minute to do where you have to pop off the plastic fan guard, insert the screw retainer, and thread the mounting bracket to the light. To keep with the clean and sleek nature of the Red Sea E-Series tank, they also include a cord management retainer track that sticks to the back of the tank and keeps all your wires in a single area, which also makes them easy to remove if needed. Although you may have already picked out the perfect place for your new all-in-one tank to go, here are some additional considerations worth taking into account. Placing your tank near an open outlet is pretty much a no-brainer, but choosing one that's preferably dedicated to just the tank is best practice. Likewise, the ideal tank location will be away from any direct sunlight as it may induce algae growth in those places where the light hits the tank. However, this isn't an absolute must. Finally, you may want to search for a spot that is relatively level to reduce unnecessary stress on the glass panels and for a more aesthetically pleasing look. But if you can't find the perfect spot, you could simply use some shims to balance it out. Now that we have the Red Sea tank put together and in that perfect spot, let's quickly cover setting it up and getting it ready for our first fish and coral. As I mentioned earlier, for this 45-gallon tank that's 24 inches long and 22 inches front to back, I'll spread out my 20-pound bag of sand and stack the 40-ish pounds of Reef Saver rock into an awesome reef-like aquascape. After that, I'll mix the 50 gallons of salt water and test it with the refractometer to make sure it's at that proper salinity of 1.026 specific gravity or 35 parts per thousand, and then fill up the tank, including the rear chambers. Now I can add in my four ounce bottle of Dr. Tim's one and only and let the tank run with the light off for about a month to let it cycle, during which I'll only toss in a very small pinch of food every few days and top off any lost water from evaporation with fresh purified or RODI water. When that month cycle is up, we can add our first couple of fish and dose the tank with another 4-ounce bottle of Dr. Tim's. At this point, the tank may be just a bit dirty from the cycle, in which case we can add the included bag of respec carbon to the media tower, which should help to clear it up, and then program our lighting schedule on the Hydra 26. As is common with tanks this size, many reefers fill them with typically lower light demand corals like polyps and softies as well as some LPS. With that in mind, we've developed the following settings for your AI Hydra that should not only provide the tank with a great look for your corals and inhabitants, but also provide them with ample amounts of par or light intensity they need to thrive. Since these AI Hydras can be pretty powerful, we don't really need to run them at 100% for a softie and LPS tank. In which case, you can set your UV to 60%, violets to 59%, royal blue to 39%, blues at 40%, green and deep red at 2%, and finally the cool white at 9%. With that done, you can sit back and enjoy the tank, maybe add a few smaller fish, and stock your tank with your favorite corals. There's not much to maintenance on these smaller all-in-one systems, and here are the most common ways to maintain the tank that often only take a few minutes to complete every one or two weeks. You may notice a film buildup on the glass over time, which is naturally going to happen and can quickly be removed with a magnetic glass cleaner like the Tunzi Care Magnet Long or the Flipper Magnet Cleaner with a soft pad on one side and a scraping blade on the other. Additionally, many successful reefers spend a few minutes every couple weeks to do a water change to help reduce elevated nutrients or unwanted contaminants that may fuel nuisance algae growth, which means for this E-Series 170, I'll probably change out about 10 gallons. While your tank is running, you can occasionally check on your skimmer cup to make sure it's not full, and when it does fill up, simply dump it, give it a quick rinse, and then put it back on. Lastly, feed your fish and corals with your choice of dry or frozen food every one or two days, but try your best not to overfeed the tank, which may leave you feeling like you're starving them because they can always look hungry. Long-term success across many reefers' tanks often share similarities in how they are maintained, and one of those similarities is careful and purposeful feeding of the fish and corals, as overfeeding could lead to more in time and effort lost in maintenance than you bargained for. Although the E-Series aquariums are decked out in some top-notch gear, let's take a look at what you can add to accessorize your Red Sea all-in-one tank to help support a wider variety of coral and to help ease some general maintenance or housekeeping on the tank. Adding some extra flow and movement of water in the tank can be beneficial for some corals, in which case you could add one or two more power heads to the bag. We like these smaller 565 gallon per hour pumps from Hydor or one of their larger evolutions because they have a suction cup magnet coupling system where the back magnet is fully coated in rubber and will fit submerged in the rear chamber. 
As I briefly mentioned earlier, for filling the tank, replacing evaporated water, or for the occasional water change, some reefers opt for getting filtered water or purified water from their local fish store or grocery store. But down the road, if you get tired of transporting water back and forth, you could pick up your very own RODI unit, which will pay for itself and save you a ton of time. Finally, it's inevitable that your tank will evaporate some water each day, which means you'll want to replenish it every so often with fresh water. This can be done by hand as the tank needs refilling. However, most reefers opt for an auto top off and reservoir to do the work for them. Your reservoir could be as simple as a five gallon bucket or something more polished like these five and 10 gallon acrylic reservoirs from Trigger, which could last you anywhere from a few days to a full week without having to fill. There's a few solid options for ATOs available, but one of our favorite is the Tunzi Osmolator with an optical eye water level sensor and a redundant high level float switch. Thanks for watching, and if you have any more questions that we didn't answer here, feel free to give us a call, send us an email, or hop on a chat. See you next time on BRS TV.